The world works the way it works, not the way you want it to, not the way I want it to, not the way anyone else wants it to. It works the way it works. To be successful at anything, you need to have an objective, measurable and clear analysis of what's going on, what the situation is. As investors, there are several questions that you need to ask yourself. The most important one is, am I getting wealthier or am I getting poorer by the day? Almost everyone is either getting wealthier and or getting poorer every single day. And your job, your first order of business is to find out which direction you're moving in. Let's find that out today. So if you ask Warren Buffett and he'll tell you a simple litmus test. Imagine you're sitting on a poker table with a bunch of other players and you've been playing for a while. A few hands have been dealt. You've probably won some, lost some. If you don't know who the patsy is or who the patsies are on the table, then you're one of the patsies. That's exactly what's going on. If you don't know who is losing money and how who is unwittingly losing money and how then chances are that you are unwittingly losing money now in the next few days i'm going to talk about seasons of investing yes there are seasons of investing and very few people talk about it people talk about investing as though it's a constant application of the same principles throughout the throughout every single time period right obviously that cannot be true Otherwise, it would be simple. Otherwise, it would be straightforward for everyone and anyone to get in, um, incredibly wealthy. But that um, doesn't seem to be the case, right? So what we're trying to do is trying to establish whether you're getting richer or poorer. Now, if you look at, there are several ways to do this, right? If you look at what you have, the stuff that you've got, you've got TVs, you've got nice furniture, you've got a nice home, you've got electronics, you've got a heated, uh, maybe even a fireplace, a heated room, or every room's heated, you've even got a heated bathroom. Seems like people have a lot more today than they did 20 years ago, right? But relatively speaking, has a particular person gotten richer or poorer may not be contingent upon how much stuff they have now today you can find homeless people with iphones you know not just any smartphones the latest generation iphones in their hands and they're begging for money for whatever they do with the money so does that mean having an iphone uh, indicates that you're rich of course not right material possessions are just not the only way of determining whether or not someone is rich. Now, taking, you know, we're talking about phones. So phones today are more powerful than the most powerful supercomputers back in the 1960s or 70s, right? That even the governments could afford to have. I remember seeing this picture of this giant, like absolutely huge um, computer, really, <laughs> uh, which had five megabytes of memory or hard drive space, five megabytes. It was as enormous as like a, I don't know, a hundred terabyte, which is a hundred times 1000 times 1000. So that's a hundred million megabytes, right? Uh, of data today would be in a RAID enclosure. So times have changed. Today we have more technology than the government itself had 50 years ago. We have plumbing today which is something you cannot say about the kings of the past, right? Kings in the past did not have plumbing. So are we wealthy? Yes, as a, as a community or as the society, we are wealthier. Everyone's wealthier because the overall standard of living has gone up thanks largely to capitalism, right? But at the same time, the question is not whether or not the whole society is getting richer. Sure, it's, you know, society is making progress. The question is whether you are 
your position in society or your rank in society is going up or down? That's the question and how do you answer that? Money is obviously or at least currency is obviously not an indicator because the prices of goods just keep going up. Now, the economists will tell you that the prices go up by 2 to 3% every year and they have these indices and you know, okay, that seems to make sense to a lot of people, to almost everybody. But here's what they're not telling you. If the prices of something are, or everything are going up by 2 to 3% and yet prices are plummeting for many things like electronics, what does that mean? Well, that means there's a lot of innovation going on, right? But you got to think about the industries where there, are, there is no innovation or little innovation. The prices are still going up in those industries. How? And they're going up by 2 to 3%. Strange, right? We all seem to have a lot more. I mean, 20, 30, 40 years ago, you would have to save up for an entire month or it would probably cost you your entire month's salary to be able to buy a small screen television. Today you can buy a large screen TV and if you're you know, affluent, reasonably affluent, you can buy that with one day of your income, right? With one day of your income. Or two days, maybe three days of your income depending upon how much money you make, right? 500 bucks will get you a decent TV today. So what's going on here? Um, well, prices are supposed to go down. There's just so much innovation and the, the ability that we have to produce a lot of this stuff, to mass produce all this stuff, it constantly keeps on going up, okay? Where it would take um, years, right? Years to build something of quality in the past. It now takes literally days. I mean, you could, you, we're entering an era in which you can have 3D printers print out a house from scratch, like an actual piece of property from scratch. Okay, how many people did it take 200 years ago or even 50 years ago to build a house? And how much time did it take? Now you've got these 3D printers within one week, one 3D printer under the supervision of one man can build a house. One man, one week with one machine can build an entire house in which you can live comfortably for 50 years, okay? Or an entire family can reside in for 50 years. So obviously the productivity has gone up. The prices should come crashing down and in a stable monetary economy. Let's say we had money that was based only on gold. The prices would go crashing down. They would plummet. Everything would be super cheap. You wouldn't believe how cheap everything could get. By the way, this is exactly what we are seeing with Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin used to be 10 years ago, 10 cents a coin, right? What's it today? $10,000 a coin? That's a hundred thousand times increase in valuation. Why? Because Bitcoin is limited in number and you cannot just mine indefinite numbers of Bitcoin, but you can print indefinite numbers of dollars. Right. So we'll talk about inflation in the video about um, seasons of investing. But here's the question. Here's the question. When you think about things that cannot be increased, land is one of those things. I remember when I was young, my parents were able to buy a piece of land, a reasonable piece of land, 100 uh, square yards, which is about 900 square feet. Right. Not too much but a reasonable piece of land on which they can they could build a small house and where they could raise their family and they could do it on very very small incomes my mother literally made less than 200 dollars a month and my fa father made a little bit more than that so they were able to do that on a very mediocre income and the house if i remember correctly it cost them maybe two or three years of their earnings right well I am making a lot of money today and a decent house in a city like New York or San Francisco would cost me 
six to seven years of earnings but my income is not your average income or below average income or reasonably affluent income i am actually very affluent and it would still take me six to seven years worth of income to be able to have a decent house uh, in new york city or san francisco okay so land is one of those things or real estate is one of those things that gives you a real indication of how wealthy you are uh, because land does appreciate appreciate in value pretty much directly in proportion to how quickly your currency your currency goes down in value okay if they double the currency in supply the land values will double the real estate values will pretty much double and that's how you figure out how wealthy you are can how many years of Take your house that you're living in or the house that you would like to live in, not your dream house, but a reasonably comfortable house that you would like to live in and that you should be able to live in, right? Working as a full-time employee, maybe as a full-time manager or a boss or a CEO or the owner of a company. How many years of your income would it take to buy one of those houses? Now, if you've been running a business of your own or if you've been doing something creative, of course, you've been going up in the world, right? Even so, the principles of investment are different in a world that we live in today. And we'll talk about that in an upcoming video where we talk about the seasons of investing. But if you are like everyone else, chances are you're trying to save money. Okay? And here's the funny thing. Let's say you work hard for the next 10 years and you save and you sacrifice and you just buy the very bare essentials that you need and you keep on saving and putting money into a bank account, there's a very real chance 10 years down the line that money will not have the same purchasing power as it does today. At least when it comes to real estate, right? Now, the prices of goods might come down, right? Might come crumbling down or crashing down uh, despite the fact that we live in an inflationary economy. That is because of the innovation and mass production and intelligence and artificial intelligence and robotics and so on and so forth so the prices keep on coming down and even still even then there's a slight increase in prices for everything think about that so the question that you need to think about today is do you have a strategy to deal with that do you have a strategy to beat them at their own game okay think about real estate that's the one real key that's the one real indicator and think about real estate in big cities not in tiny places that just suddenly just recently got a huge influx of cash and there was a huge creation of or availability of jobs and suddenly the prices went up we don't talk we don't want to talk about that because that's you know that's not really relevant to what we are talking about today what is relevant to what we are talking about today is a place where prices have smoothly increased and what can you afford now as opposed to what you could afford 10 years ago or what your parents could have afforded when they were your age. If you think about that, you'll find, chances are, right, for the most people, you'll find that you're not doing as well as you would like to think. Yeah, we've got all these things, but that's pretty much because the currency has been devalued and so we can make a whole lot more of it, you know, purely numerically speaking, right? $450 a month, $4,500 a month. It seems like a 10 times increase in purchasing power, but is it really? Is it really? We have to think about that. The governments just keep on printing money. They have, it's not even the governments actually, the governments just approve that. It's, um, you know, a whole different ball game that's being played out there and we'll talk about that hopefully in the next few videos if I don't disappear. Um, but yeah, where are you in the world? You know, when I was young, it used to be uh, that if you made a million dollars, you would have a really good retirement, right? That's what my parents used to talk about. If they could somehow get to a million dollars, it would be an enormously lavish and comfortable retirement. Now, with the increasing lifespans, if they retire at 60, which they have, and if they only have $1 million, they might actually run out of all their money long before they die, 20 years before they die. 
if they live on to be 100 years old, what are they going to do at 80? Go back to get a job? <laughs> Start another business at 80? What are they going to do? So that's a question that you need to ponder over. How many millions of dollars will you need? And there are calculators online that you can look at that will tell you how many millions of dollars you're going to need if you want to continue living the same lifestyle that you have right now or a slightly better lifestyle than you have right now, assuming your current lifestyle is good enough. Not so bad. And if the number scares you, then congratulations, you've been going down. Okay, without even realizing it, you've been going down in the hierarchy. Someone else has been profiting. You've been sitting on a poker table all this time and you were the patsy and they were all getting money from your pocket and you didn't even realize it. Okay? So in the upcoming videos, we're going to talk about seasons of investing and how you can basically turn any situation into a favorable one. And we're going to talk about why assets are not the best way of, or let's put it this way, increment of the value of assets is not going to make you rich. If you save and save and save and save and save and then buy an asset and then hope against hope that the asset goes up in value, which it most likely will. Let's say you save $100,000 to buy a piece of property and it goes up in value. Over time it will, right? Because, you know, they're printing money, it has to. Well, guess what? You're probably going to get a little bit poorer in the process. But you'll still be okay because you bought real estate. If you buy other assets, those are depreciating assets. All assets except land, gold, and maybe Bitcoin for now are depreciating over the long term. Even this property that we are sitting in, it has a shelf life or it has a life span, right? Over a certain number of years, it's going to get deteriorated. It's going to deteriorate and someone is going to have to wreck it down with a wrecking ball. <laughs> and a rebuild from scratch but you're not going to be able to create new land right for the most part so land is an appreciating asset gold over the very long term is an appreciating asset not over a short term like not over 10 years last 10 years gold has basically held the same value okay it may have gone down a little bit may have gone back up a little bit but that's it Bitcoin, again, you can't just mass produce Bitcoin. There's only so much of it. So for now, it's an appreciating asset. But other than these, um, all other assets are depreciating in value. And if you're hoping that they go up in value, well, you'll have lost value. Let's say you buy a camera for $1,000 today. Very silly example. And then you are somehow able to sell it for $2,000 10 years down the line right because it's in pristine condition you never used it even once well the purchasing power of a thousand dollars today is probably going to be greater than the purchasing power of two thousand dollars ten years down the line because of currency devaluation we're going to talk about that in the next video so that's it for this video the food for thought or the real question is how much more can you actually purchase and by more, I don't mean stuff. Stuff is getting cheaper, incredibly cheaper. I mean, if the money were not inflationary, you wouldn't believe how cheap everything would be. Okay, we're talking about land. How much more land in a city like New York? And there are calculators, by the way, you can do that calculation. You can check out the land prices of something on, let's say, Fifth Avenue in 1990 or 19, in 1980s. And you can compare that to today. And then you can take the average income of what people were making back in 1980s and you can take the average income of what people are making today in the same city and yeah you'll know uh what i'm talking about my name is Lakshbel. it's been great talking to you i'll see you soon again